Hey everyone, welcome back to this uh, tutorial series. Um, I'm starting a new chunk of the series, I guess you could call it. Some of the videos, most of the videos actually, you're not going to need to have pre the previous series experience from. Um, so if you're new to the series, feel free to stay and just watch through these series if they've got some information that you wanted. But it, you know, if you feel like it, the videos that we've been working on previously, they're actually like I, I really enjoy what I was able to do. Hopefully you can learn from the, them as well. Stay tuned to the end of the video if you've been watching for a while. If you've been wondering if I've been planning on doing multiplayer, I released a video like uh, a week or two ago and that video basically explained why I hadn't fully decided on doing multiplayer. I have decided I am going to do multiplayer and I'll be explaining more of that at the end of the video. Anyways, let me just show you what we're going to be working on today. We're going to be starting on some of the UI. Um, as you can see, I created just a simple mock-up of our sort of player status bar. There are some things missing. Don't worry about that. We will get there. So for instance, I've got our portrait here with my little icon. Um, and then I've got our nameplate here. It says text, but it will say Super Trooper. Then I've got health, magic, and something very special. So let's actually have a look at how this works. So we don't actually have anything manipulating our health right now. But for instance, as you can see, it sets up our name um, and we have all these stats here so for instance we have our primary stats strength agility intellect stamina and spirit they're just set up pretty basically we can make some changes to that later on I'm not gonna focus on that too much right now our secondary stats are all based on that as you can see again also just very basic but if I make some changes here you can see that our health is actually changing and our magic and our energy. And that's it. This is basically what we're going to be working on. All right, so let's let's jump in and start by addressing a couple things. So first of all, you might not have this, but my gizmos are turned off. So I'm going to turn that back on so I can see what's going on here. Um, and yeah, so what we're going to start out with is we're going to create a UI system. So now I'm going to start by creating a panel. So I'm going to go to the hierarchy, right click and go UI panel. And as you can see, not only does this, does this give us three new objects, the panel, of course, the canvas and the event system, but in the world, it's kind of like this really big thing. Now, right now it's a, it's a, like a rectangle, but it's like closer to a square. And the reason why is because we haven't set up our game here so as soon as I click on this we're set to 16 by 9 of course then if I go back you can see it's much much closer to the shape of our actual screen so the other thing I want to do is I want to set like a baseline resolution for the game um, and in order to do that I'm gonna come down here uh, as you can see I already have it created but I'm just gonna delete this so I can create it again I'm gonna call this one HD in the label here we're going to keep it at fixed resolution, but you can choose aspect ratio if you want. And I'm just going to go 1280 by 720 and hit OK. And now we have our 720p uh, scene. Then I'm going to go to canvas. And in the canvas scaler, I'm going to switch from constant pixel size to scale with screen size. And I'm going to expand. So the smallest resolution that we can have is 720p. Everything's going to go up from there. I don't think that's going to be an issue. I can't imagine that there are a lot of people playing on like CRT screens anymore. But you know, who knows. Now let's actually talk a little bit about what these UI elements are. Um, and one of the first things that I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my tool from the transform tool, the move tool, to the rect tool. And as you can see, this gave us, you know, a couple different options. The little blue uh, circles as well as the little blue donut in here. And if I just grab, I'm just going to grab this edge and bring it in over here. And if we look at our game view, you can see that forward is this way. So positive Z is forward, which means in order to sort of line this up, our view, I'm going to click negative and then click this little square in the center so that we can have it set to orthographic. Um, and orthographic basically just flattens the view for you. Um, it makes things that are far away the same size as things that are close up. All right, so back to the panel. Um, now the panel itself, we don't actually need anything for in, inside of our... So I'm going to remove the image component and remove the canvas renderer. 
and now we're just left with basically an empty rectangle. So this rectangle is what we're going to be using for our health bar, our little stats display. And I'm just going to go over a couple of things so that you can understand exactly how this rect transform works, because it is a similar concept as a transform in the 3D, in 3D space, except it's stuck to the canvas and it kind of has a different way of operating. So for instance, the rect transform has basically two rectangles and one point. So the first rectangle is the main rectangle, which is where all of our elements will be rendered. So for instance, if we have an image, it'll be um, rendered within this rectangle. The second rectangle is actually, it's, it's pretty flex flexible, but it's essentially the anchors, right? So you can actually make this, the anchors, you can make it a line if you want to. So for instance, I can go uh, just hit zero on the max X and all of a sudden you can see there's two points and that's where this is stuck to. You can also notice that now I have different um, options here for my, for the main rectangle. So for instance, I have position X, top, width, and bottom. And if I just undo really quick, you'll see that when it's set to the size of the, um, the canvas, I have left, top, right, and bottom. And if I set it to a point, so if I go, um, let's do one, one, zero, zero. So this bottom left-hand corner, you can see that it's a position, position X, position Y. The position is based upon where this, uh, where this pivot is in relation to the anchors. And that's the final thing. The pivot is the point. The pivot essentially is what we rotate around. So if I move the pivot over, you can see that if I start to rotate it, it's rotating around the pivot. So fairly simple. Now, um, in order to set your anchor points, you can drag the anchor points themselves. As you can see, the, the anchor points actually can't go past the canvas and the idea here is that the 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 canvas is essentially the parent rectangle so if i take the panel and i create a new ui panel inside the main panel you can see that the anchor points are actually set to the max of the panel that is the parent of the new panel that we created i'm just going to delete this little panel here all that explanation aside let's actually start bringing in some of the ui elements that we're going to use to populate our our canvas. So first I'm going to create a new folder, call this one textures. Then inside of textures, I'm going to create a new folder and call it UI so that I stay organized. I have these two images here and these two images are essentially the only ones that I'm going to use for now. This is basic prototyping stuff. Like it's not necessarily final UI. I'm just going to drop this into my UI. The idea being that I'm just sort of laying things out and trying to figure out where I want things to go before I go in and, and start creating uh, some custom UI, which I'll probably do much farther down the line in a different video. All right, so I'm going to select both of these. And in the inspector here, you can see we have all of our settings. I'm going to change the texture type to Sprite. And we're going to have to start editing these separately as well. So the circle. Just going to open this up. As you can see, the size is 256. So I'm just going to limit this to 256 and hit apply. And that's actually basically it for our circle. Our panel is 64. So I'm going to limit it to 64. Um, it's not really that important, but it's something that I wanted to do just to make sure I have it. Also the panel, I'm going to switch from bilinear to point. It's just going to, just means that it's going to be, you know, per pixel. There's no smoothing of the texture. And then I need to go into the sprite editor. And in the sprite editor, you can see that we open this new window here and that I have some options here for me. I'm not gonna manipulate the pivot. I'm not gonna worry about the, the blue border, but what I am gonna focus on is these uh, green lines here. And I can just grab this corner here and grab this corner here. And now these are the portions that are gonna stay unchanged, these corners. This is what's gonna stretch, hit apply. Close this out, and now we have our nine slice sprite. And I'm also gonna change the pixels per unit up here to something like 250. All right, now that we're done that, let's go back to our panel. And I wanna do a couple things. So first, I want to set my anchor point to the corner, but I also wanna set my pivot. And in order to do that, you can see up here, it says shift, set pivot, and alt, set position. 
So I just want to set, I'm, I'm actually going to hold shift and alt so that I can set it all to the corner. So now here I'm going to change the width and the height, something like 200 for the width and the height will probably be something like 70. And then the position I'm going to go with, uh, let's say 20 by negative 20. And the reason why I chose negative 20 is because it's going to be below the anchor point. So as you can see, this is a nice little position for our thing, and it's a decent size relative to the screen. Next, I'm going to create a UI image. That is not what I was looking for. I don't really know what the difference between a raw image and an image is, but uh, let's just go back UI image. So this image is going to be our circle, and I'm going to set the height manually, 70 and 70. And I'm going to set the anchor to the left side here. I'm just going to bring it over here. This way, with the anchor set there, no matter what I do, it's always going to stay to that side. So for now, that's good. Um, we might have to make some adjustments in order to get it to actually fit to the size. And this is just going to be a, like a little placeholder for our portrait. In fact, just so we're all on the same page, I brought in a very familiar image. I'm just going to duplicate the image here. We'll grab this sprite here, bring the color way up, maybe scale it down just a tiny little bit. And then I'm going to duplicate again the circle. I'm gonna, man, really. I do that a lot. Um, and then I'm going to again scale inwards. So I'm going to add a new mask. Show the mask graphic. Drop this here. I'm not really sure why it's not cutting it out. There we go. Now we just have our character's head inset there. It's a little bit, it's, it's a little weird, but anyways, um, it's not perfect. As you can see, there's like some, some jagged edges here, and I'm not really sure what exactly we can do to sort of solve that. That aside, let's just start naming these. So this is going to be portrait image, portrait mask, call this one portrait, and I'm just going to drop portrait mask inside of portrait. All right, so... Now let's let's actually start on working on our our status bars. So first, I'm going to create a UI image, um, and this image this we need this to be underneath inside panel, um, probably underneath portrait. We'll just move it over here to the side like that, and then just bring this corner over here. The height will make it like 20 or something, and we'll move this way up here to the top. Next, I'm going to duplicate this image. Actually, I'm not going to duplicate the image. I'm going to right click on the panel, create an empty. And this is going to be our health bars, essentially. So I'm going to bring this over like this. So I'm just going to rename this one status bars and the image I'm going to rename name. So there is actually one thing I just created this off screen, but another image that I'm going to be putting in the same package inside the description, this illustration, I'm just going to rename this really quickly to square. I'll, I'll, I'll explain later why I have this, but for now, we're just going to do that. Next thing is you can see here I renamed panel to panel alpha and I'm just going to duplicate this one. I'm going to change the name here to just panel. So essentially for you it would be renaming one of them to panel alpha and then the one that I've named panel I'm just going to go here into advanced and change input texture alpha to none. And I'm going to hit apply and that's just going to change that so we essentially don't have an alpha. So for the name, I'm just going to drop this here to the source, leave it as is, and then status bars, I'm going to create a new UI image. And this is going to be our main bar. We're going to set the height to something like 14, and then we're, I'll just max out the, the width. Also, it might be a good idea to sort of bring the alpha way down. Then I'm going to duplicate the image, bring the alpha way back up, and then I'm going to drop square in there. Oh, I need to set it up as a spread. Also... 64 and we're good. So let's drop the square in there. Now the reason why I did that is because as you can see it dropped down all this stuff here um, and I wanted to access some of that. So if I go back to square you can see I can set it to filled and the fill type it's set to radial which is like it's pretty cool but it's not what we're looking for. I want it to be horizontal from the left. So that's going to be our bar. You can also use a slider if you want. It's entirely up to you how you choose to do it, but I'm going to show you this way because I think this is a little bit more efficient and 
slightly more flexible. And then on top of that, I'm gonna create a new image and I'm gonna drop a panel in there and that's gonna be it. So let's actually name these. So this is gonna be our, we're gonna go health bar. I'm gonna drop these two inside here. This one will be called amount. And I'm just gonna adjust the size here to fit pretty closely to the image here. And let's just, oops, I do that all the time. And let's just hold this hold down alt to set this size. Then I'm gonna go to color and I'm just gonna make this like a green. Maybe throw some blue back in there and make it a little bit darker. Cool, so now our amount depletes. We have an empty health bar. All right, so now let's just take this, we'll call this one container. And then I'm gonna take the health bar and duplicate it twice. Now these are all set on top of each other and I want these to be kind of like stacked on top of each other. So I'm gonna to go to status bars and I'm gonna add a layout component. This one down at the bottom, the vertical layout group is the one that I want. So as you can see, it does what we're looking for. Um, I want the child alignment to be middle center and I want the child control size set to width so that if I adjust the width here, it changes size. Now I actually need to uh, do something here. So the amount, the container for each of them, I'm going to set this out like that so that we essentially can just change the status bar size and it'll all just come along. Cool. Now let's actually change the bottom two. So this one will be magic bar. We'll go down to the amount and we'll change the color to like a blue. Leave a little bit of green in there just for just for color. Make, maybe make it a little bit brighter as well. Um, and then the last one, it's a bit of a surprise, but it's probably the first major deviation I'm gonna make from World of Warcraft. I'm gonna make an energy bar. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that's gonna do later. And then I'm gonna make this one yellow with like a little bit of orange. All right, so now you can see that they're all separated. So I'm gonna go back to status bars with this vertical layout group and change the height to nothing. So now as you can see, I have this, I have this nice little health status section here. Now let's actually start adding text. So for instance, name, I'm just going to come here to UI and add a text mesh pro. Now, if you haven't added text mesh pro before, you'll, you're going to see this and you're just going to want to click import TMP essentials and it'll just import everything. Now we have our new text and it's white. Now in World of Warcraft, our name text is actually yellow. So I'm going to honor that and change the name text to a yellow. Maybe make it just a little bit more orange. Then I'm going to set it to the size, roughly roughly to the size of the, to the panel here. As you can see, it's kind of overflowing. So I'm just gonna come down here and select auto size, bring it down to like, like zero. Then I'm also gonna center it. We'll just adjust some of the margins here. Yeah, we'll just do something like, it's pretty dark. So I think one thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change this um, no, that's not right. We'll just add like a like a border to it. So I'm going to change from material to outline. And that border is nice. It's actually pretty decent. I think that is acceptable. We look at it inside of our game. Still not quite dark enough, so maybe I'll just make it a little bit darker. Yeah, and perhaps it should just be black. <laughs> Honestly, we'll just set it to black and we'll just go back to material. Maybe make it bold or something like that. I'm just going to put my name in there. You can put your name in there as well. So next, I'm going to add the same thing to our bars. So UI Text Mesh Pro, set the size. Now there is a little bit of overflow in the text for World of Warcraft. So I'm just gonna set it to auto size, bring the size down to like one as well. And I'm not gonna worry too much about the overflow. Um, it is a outline material, so I'm gonna make it bold and increase the outline threshold just so that we've got something. And then I'm just gonna add a number in here just so we can sort of see what's up. And then I'll duplicate this twice, drop this into our magic bar and our container. You make the name amount text, copy that over and bring these down of course. So that's it for the UI portion of this. Let's actually start getting into the coding. 
because this is where I think it's going to be the most exciting thing. So let's select our player and let's add a component. We're going to call this one player stats. Create and add. And these are ba this is basically going to hold all of the base stats of our player. All of the primary stats, all of the secondary stats, our name, probably our level as well later on. But uh, for now, we'll just work on the, the primary stats and the secondary stats. Starting with the name up here, I'm just going to name make a public string name, maybe player name. And then we want to create our stats, but I personally don't want to have to write out st strength, agility, intellect for every single character that we have. So I'm going to do it once in here, and then that's going to be it. And the, re the way I'm going to do that is by creating a new public class. We're going to call this one primary stats. Uh, we're going to make this one system.serializable. This way, when, whenever we add this to our any of our scripts, we can see it in the inspector. And then I'm going to start creating a bunch of integers. So public int will go strength, agility, intellect, stamina, and spirit. Now, this is great and all, but we want to create a really easy way for us to set these uh, set all of these values right away. So in order to do that, we're going to create a constructor. It's going to be a public primary stats, and we're going to do int str, int a, uh, agi, int intel, intl, int stam, and int spr. Next, we're going to set all of those to our main variables. So strength is equal to str, agility is equal to agi, intellect is equal to intel, stamina is equal to stam, and spirit is equal to spr. Cool. Next, I want to set up a public class we're going to call this one secondary stats. Now this is going to be stuff like our health. So we'll just copy the system serializable, drop it on top. We'll go public, int, health, magic, and energy. Same thing, we'll create a constructor, public, secondary stats. We'll make it int, heal, int, mag, int, energy. Then we're going to set everything. So health is equal to heal, magic is equal to mag, and uh, energy is equal to energy. So now we have all that set up, let's actually set the baseline for what we actually need for our player. First, we need our base stats. So let's go, we'll just go stats here. We'll go secondary and what we need is we need a sort of max ceiling for our our secondary stats so we'll go public secondary stats we'll go current secondary and then public secondary stats we'll call this one max secondary so as you as you probably are aware, the max secondary is going to be the, the upper limit and the current secondary is going to be like what our health or magic is currently. Next we'll go with our primary. We'll go public primary stats, current primary, public primary stats, and we'll call this one base primary. Now the reason why I chose to go with base primary instead of max primary is because uh, depending on our items and that, things could be different. So our current primary stats could be, you know, plus something based on, you know, what armor we're wearing or what debuff we have. It could be minus something. Now let's actually set everything up. So I'm going to create a new void, call this one stat setup. And I'm going to copy all of these into the brackets here. 
So that's basically very easy for us to set all that up. So we'll go base primary is equal to new primary stats. Then we'll go str, oops, str, agi, intl, stam, spr. Then uh, the current stats, current secondary, no, current primary is going to be equal to new primary stats. And I'm just going to copy base primary basically. So base primary uh, dot strength. Nope, that's stamina. Base primary dot agility. Base primary dot intellect. Base primary dot stamina. And base primary dot spirit. All right, so now we actually have to set up how these affect our uh, secondary stats. This is why I'm calling them secondary stats, because all of our primary stats will affect our secondary stats. So we'll go max secondary is equal to new secondary stats. So the health is going to be based on our stamina, current primary dot stamina. And for now, we'll just go times 10. Later on, we'll actually be creating like multipliers so that we can uh, change it up uh, per race and uh, that kind of thing. Then I'm going to, the magic is going to be based on intellect. So it's going to be current primary dot intellect times 10. And finally, of course, the energy is going to be based on agility. So current primary dot agility times 10. And then the current secondary is equal to new secondary stats. And I'm just going to copy max secondary, max secondary dot health, max secondary dot magic, and max secondary dot energy. So now let's actually set up the stats in the start method. And just as a baseline, I'm just going to go 10, 10, 10, and 10. Later on, we'll actually, again, set something up so that you can actually create your own character, plug these in at the beginning, and then from then on, it's all just, you know, what skills you're learning and that kind of thing. Um, okay, so that's our SAT setup. And um, we won't worry too much about updating it, so like leveling up and that kind of thing, but for now, uh, we'll just leave this as is. So now we actually need to make sure that our UI system actually works to uh, based on all this stuff. So I'm going to just open this up, and we're going to start filling some of these in. So player name, for instance, I'm just going to call myself Super Trooper. I'm actually just going to change the the name here to text. In order to actually manipulate a lot of this stuff, we're actually going to need to use two things. So we're going to go using Unity Engine dot UI. So this is going to give us access to the UI system and also using TM Pro. TM Pro is obviously going to give us access to the Text Mesh Pro stuff. So first, let's go with our UI references. I'm going to go with health. Im we'll go public image dot uh, public image health slider, and we're going to do public text mesh pro u GUI. We'll call this one health text. Then I'm going to copy this three times. We'll just change things around. So this is going to be magic. Call this one magic and magic. And then this one will be energy. We'll just drop that in here. So now that we have all this set up, let's actually drag these in. So I'm just going to lock this so that I can drag all of our elements in. Oh, and you know what? I actually forgot something. So up here, we'll just go with the name. We'll go public text mesh pro you GUI we'll go name text so now let's now let's do this properly so name text is going to be here then we're going to go with the health bar container nope not the container we need the amount here the amount text here and same thing with the magic bar and of course the energy bar so now that we have our references let's actually start setting things up what I want to do is I want to create a new method. This is just going to be our slider. So let's actually make this 
I'll make this a float. And we'll call this one slider. We'll, we'll actually put in a, a two values that we need. So we'll go int max stat int current stat. And then in here, we're going to create a new float. We're going to call this one slider float slider value. And then we're going to return slider value. We'll just set it equal to zero or something. So now inside here, we're going to set slider value equal to current stat divided by max stat. All right, so after that, let's create a new void update status. We'll start with our health, of course. Just realize that this isn't big enough for you guys to see, so I'm going to bring this up to like 125. My apologies if you've been watching this far and it's been difficult for you to see, but sometimes it's hard for me to remember this stuff. I don't really like editing. I don't really like working on code with like big text. Anyways, so the health is essentially going to be setting the slider value to the to the slider value. <laughs> so let's go here, amount. Okay, so the fill amount, that's the one that we're looking for. So we wanna set the uh, health slider dot fill amount equal to slider. We should probably capitalize this. Slider, then we're gonna go with our max stat. So that's gonna be max secondary dot health and our current secondary dot health. We also need to set our text. So in order to do that, we're going to go health text dot set text. And we're going to set the text to current secondary uh, dot health dot to string. Don't forget the back, the brackets at the end of that. Plus, and then we're just going to do a little slash inside quotes plus max secondary dot health. And that's going to set our text. So there is one last thing that I want to make sure we're doing. And that's, I want to make sure that we're limiting the amount of health that we can actually have. So I'm not going to do this here, but I'm going to create a new void limit stat values. And I'm essentially going to go current secondary dot health is equal to mathf dot clamp and we'll go current secondary dot health. Integer min is just gonna be zero and integer max is gonna be max secondary dot health. Then I'll just copy this three times and we'll just change this to magic and energy. So we'll set this one up right here inside update. Now this is gonna be coming before our update status, but it's gonna be coming after things like that, that manipulate our health. So like for instance, us regenerating, uh, as well as us losing health. All right, so now let's copy this and we'll just change this to magic slider, change this to magic, copy this around. Oops, uh, this has gotta be two string. It probably doesn't, but I'm, I'm, I want to make sure that I'm doing that. Let's go magic slider, no magic text, energy slider, energy text. Just copy this around. Now let's just take our update status, drop it down below limit status, and let's have a look at what this does. So now let's press play. I want to select my player. Let's press play and we'll look at our stats. So they are setting up, right? And I'm just going to change our health and see what that does. So for some reason, it seems to immediately go to zero. And I think, I think there's a good reason for that. So let's go and fix that. Um, the reason why I think that is, is I think we need to cast this as a float. So Cast this as a float, and we'll also cast this as a float. So that way we're dividing two float values rather than two integers and then converting it to a float. I'm not really sure if that's the reason, but let's just see. Let's just see what happens here. Ah, yeah. So as you can see, that fixed our problem. And it doesn't go over or under. So now the final thing, of course, that we need to do is we need to make sure that our text is actually set to the name of our player. So let's... um. Do that really quick. I'm just going to do that inside. Uh, let's just create a new method really quick. It's going to be a really simple method. Let's just put this directly between slider and update status. We're going to just call this void set player name. 
and I'm just going to set the player name. So this is going to be name text dot set text. And we're just going to put in player name. And that's it. And then I'm just going to drag this underneath st stats. And we'll further set this up later on. I just want to do something really simple so that we can actually get our text in there. And voila. All right, let's do a little bit of cleanup just to make sure that we're good to go. Um, I'm going to hide the max secondary stats. So hide an inspector. And I'm also going to hide the base primary stats. And that should be it for today. Uh, next time we're going to be working on the experience bar and our levels and we're probably going to be adding some stuff in there so that we can level up when we've maxed out our level and uh, we'll probably cap the level. Um, I'm not really sure exactly what the level cap is going to do but or what it's going to be but we are going to be putting a level cap probably 60 just because that's a good it's a good number. Um, if you're staying here for the update as I said previously I have decided that I am going to do uh, multiplayer. The reason why I decided this is because what I found was that my reasoning for it was more kind of out of intimidation, I guess. Like I was really intimidated by the topic. But this whole channel, the whole point of this is about me learning new things and hopefully you guys learning the things that I learned by me making these videos. So I am going to learn, uh, I am going to figure it out and I am going to do my best to implement it uh, into this project. So I'll be working on that for the next little while. I mean, I have nowhere to go, as you can see with my hair. I haven't been able to even go out for a haircut, um, as I'm sure you're all stuck at home as well. So it is going to be just something that I'm going to learn. Other than that, I don't really have any new updates. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like. Uh, you can ask me some questions in the comments or just say things in the comments, I guess. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, because if you do, you know, you'll get all, all the all the updates, uh, at least if you hit the notification bell. I don't really know how this works anymore. It seems like YouTube isn't as simple and straightforward as it used to be. But anyways, I hope you liked the video and I'll see you guys next time. Super trooper, super trooper, super trooper, and he sells soup.